this video we are going to discuss about the Hall effect uh, in experimental way. It is the one of the experiment related to the applied physics lab. As we know that Hall effect is nothing but we can decide what kind of semiconductor it is and even we can calculate the carrier concentration, the conductivity, magnetic field, mostly Hall effect is used as the magnetic sensors. The definition related to the Hall effect is when you place a current carrying semiconductor is in a magnetic field, we observe the Hall voltage across the semiconductor. When a piece of either conductor or the semiconductor placed in a transverse magnetic field, Hall voltage is developed across the semiconductor and the voltage direction, electric field direction is perpendicular to the both the current direction and the magnetic field direction. So we can observe the Fleming's left hand rule. As we know that, so if you place the three fingers perpendicular to each other, one finger is represents the force, second finger is represents the magnetic field and the third finger is represents the current direction. Here also we are observing the same. Here we observe the two kinds of forces. One is related to the magnetic force that is Lorentz force and another force is experienced by the electron is electrical force. So because of these forces, when the charge carriers are moving across the semiconductor, the charge carriers are deviate its path and it moves towards the one of its semiconductor phase. So one phase it is accumulated more charge carriers, another phase the, there is a less number of charge carriers are accumulated because of this there is a potential difference is maintained across the semiconductor and the electric field is developed across the semiconductor. The electric field direction is perpendicular to the both the current as well as magnetic field direction. For example, when you take the current in this direction and the magnetic field in the top direction, then obviously electric force is direction is like this. So if you turn to the other direction, then force experience direction is also changes. That is electron movement direction, electron deflected direction is also changes and it completely depends upon the direction of the current as well as direction of the magnetic field. Coming to the experimental point of view, uh, we require coil, electromagnet, we require the electromagnet and this is a gas meter, digital gas meter and we can measure the how much magnetic field is producing when it is connected with the uh, electrical circuits and it is the constant power supply it is the IC regulated power supply for Hall effect. So these are the components required and this is the Hall sensor this is the Hall sensor by using this sensor we can measure the magnetic field in between the two electromagnets by placing here we can measure the by, by placing here we can measure how much magnetic field is generated by the electromagnet. So generally we know that when the separation between the two terminals, when the separation between the two magnets is more, the magnetic field is less and the separation is less, the magnetic field is more, that is completely decided by the separation as well as how much current we are supplying to the electromagnet. These two decides how much magnetic field is generated by the electromagnet that is measuring by using the digital gas meter with sensor. And this is the IC regulated power supply. We are connecting the power supply to the electromagnet because it is electromagnet it generates the magnetic field when it is connected with the power supply. So here there are two terminals one is positive, other is negative. So the positive should be connected with the regulated power supply positive, negative should be connected with the regulated power supply IC, regulated
generated power supply negative. So this is the variable power. That means we can vary the power input to the electromagnet based on the strength of the power. So the electromagnet performs. That means if the power is more, then it can able to generate more magnetic field. If the power is less, it can generate less magnetic field. Here I connected the electromagnets and about this I need to connect to the power socket now it is in on now I want to measure how much magnetic field is generated when I place this much separation when I place this much separation at the same time I given the current value for example I given the 0.532 amps or 540 amps I want to check how much magnetic field generated in that particular situation for this I am using the digital gas meter with Hall sensor this Hall sensor should be placed this Hall sensor should be placed between the two electromagnets this is a holder just I am using holder to place this in between the should place the sensor in proper position so if you deviate the exact position it gives the wrong result so I place the sensor between the electromagnets and I given the current value is now its value is around like a 293 etc and I am connecting this also Yes, a minute. It is. I will use the external socket. And it is. Now it is in on. See here. Now I can able to generate the. 7, 5 kilogas etc. It is mainly completely depends upon the current value. How much? For example, I want to give the 1 kilogas. I want to generate the 1 kilogas. For this, I am By varying the positions also, we can vary the magnetic field strength. See here, the electromagnet is connected with the power supply and the hall sensor is connected connected in between the electromagnet. Just I place the hall sensor between the electromagnets. 
here it is showing the how much current we are supplying to the electromagnet, how much magnetic field is generating between the electromagnets. Now, the strength of the magnetic field I want to adjust to the 1.5 kilogas ohm. So, I can't exactly but there is a possibility to adjust to the 1.5 ohm. See here, if you able to reduce the current value, there is a change in the magnetic field. Right? So, it is around 1 kilogas. Then 1.5 kilogas is developing across the electromagnet by giving that much power. So, I note down the 1.5 kilogas. That means now I am doing the experiment by giving the 1.5 kilogas magnetic field. So, now after completion of this, no need to give the uh, no need to connect the Hall probe again because I know the exact value how much magnetic field is generating between the electromagnets. That's what I am removing this. That's what I am removing this. I note down the 1.5 kilogas. That means in this experiment, I am going to use the magnetic field value B value equivalence to 1.5 kilogas. Now I remove the sensor. Further, I don't need this gas meter also. We can turn off this. Now, I want to place the semiconductor. I want to place the semiconductor between the electric magnets because, as you know, the definition itself, I need to place the current carrying semiconductor is placed between the a transverse magnetic field. Hall voltage or the electric field is generated, and the direction of the Hall voltage is perpendicular to the direction of the both the current as well as magnetic field. So now I take in the semiconductor, it has four leads, four with the different colors. I need to place the these four with the exactly matched connections. It is representing the one current and another is the voltmeter. This meter is giving both the current as well as voltage. Right. Now I am placing this semiconductor between the electromagnets. properly between the electromagnets. Now I need to turn on this. Right. I turn on the instrument. Now we are doing the experiment with 1.5 kilogas. I want to get the result related to the voltage versus current. So initially I am varying the current value from lower to higher by using the output button. So I keep on increasing the button that is input point of view. I note down the current as well as voltage values. I will note down the current as well as voltage values in this experiment. So we are getting different kinds of set, different sets of values for current as well as voltage. Here the current is in milliamps and the voltage in millivolts. Note down all the values from lower value to the higher values related to the that semiconductor output values. That is voltage across the semiconductor and current. How much current it is carrying the through the semiconductor, how much voltage is generating across the semiconductor it gives the results. Clear? Here the current is representing that how much current is generating across the semiconductor. This is how much voltage is across the semiconductor. This value should be known now. And then, and then, just open your manual. Just open your manual. We are calculating. Experiment number 5 in your manual.
and according to the manual it is the 9th experiment. So in this experiment we are calculating the Hall coefficient, nature of the charge carriers that is whether it is P type charge carriers and the N type semiconductor, carrier density, carrier mobility of a semiconductor. As discussed it requires the IC regulated power supply. This power supply is used to generate the magnetic field in the electromagnets and electromagnets to generate the magnetic field constant power supply constant current power supply for Hall effect experiment that means when you place the semiconductor between the electromagnets we are going to measure the both the voltage as well as current Hall sensor that is nothing but the probe and the semiconductor crystal already connected in between the electromagnets now after note down the values of the voltage Hall voltage across the semiconductor and the Hall current. Just take the Hall voltage on the x-axis parameter and the current is take it as the y-axis parameter. So it, it is the linear relation between the voltage versus current. We observed it is like a straight line. Just note down the slope. Slope gives the here it's just slope is nothing but voltage by current. Generally, if you take in the voltage on y-axis and the current is on x-axis, it gives the V by I is the slope. If you take in I as y-axis parameter and the voltage is on x-axis parameter, I by V is the slope. So we know that the formula is Hall coefficient is VH into Z by I into V. Here VH by I is generally take it as slope that means we are getting that value by using the graph between the voltage and the current reading z is the thickness of the crystal the thickness of the crystal that is how much thickness it is there that should be taken as 0.7 mm uh, we are using the 0.7 mm thickness for the uh, present experiment we should replace z with the 0.7 mm and we know a b value initially we measured the b value is 1.5 kilo gas so b value should be uh, substitute then finally we will get the Hall coefficient value Rh. So we can measure this experiment with 1.5 kg, 2 kg or the 3 kg that means that but don't vary the uh, after after connections and after measuring the uh, how much magnetic field is generated across the uh, electromagnet don't increase the current value don't change the old, uh, current value or don't decrease the current value don't move the terminal distance. So if you move the terminal distance then obviously magnetic field may not constant. So that's what we are doing the experiment with constant magnetic field either 1.5 kg or the 2 kg. After that by knowing the RH value there is one more formula to measure the carrier density. Even by knowing the RH value that is equal as to what kind of if you are getting RH value is positive we are getting the value is P type semiconductor. Rh is negative, we are getting the N type semiconductor. So by using the different kinds of formulas, there is a possibility to calculate the carrier density, carrier mobility, Hall coefficient, even we can measure the number of carriers also. Like a, how many electrons or how many holes in, in particular semiconductor. For example, in case of P type semiconductor, we are going to measure the number of holes. For example, if we take it as N type semiconductor, we are going to measure the and electrons as well as hole depends upon the nature of the semiconductor. This is about the Hall effect. So Hall effect is mostly useful to measure the semiconductor nature, semiconductor charge carriers etc. And in reality Hall sensors are used, mostly Hall sensors are used to detect the magnetic field at a particular location. That's it. This is about the Hall effect. Thank you.